Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Krause. We're back. Back on a Wednesday, where we should be. This is this whole thing last week, getting us all off track. It was weird. Yeah, so, it didn't go as quite as planned, but uh, so yeah, it goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oops. My bad. Today is our... Uh... <laughs> Today is our standard Q&A session, and where do these questions come from, sir? Well, the first half of the show, you're going to be hearing questions from our Discord, some very old ones from our Discord, uh, from uh, non-priority patrons and uh, other folks who are over there as well. And then uh, the second half, all of our questions will be coming from Twitter. Uh, Once again, if you want to have priority, you can join the priority line, which is... Still quite a line, but it's a shorter line. <laughs> it's by a conga a, line. <laughs> <laughs> by becoming a $5 patron or greater over at patreon.com backslash bumblecast or ko-fi.com backslash bumblecast. Yes. Well, let's jump right on into it from the, the standard Q&A with one from Alphamon or you can. Are the events of Sonic 4 episodes 1 and 2 canon to IDW? I ask this because we never truly find out what became of Little Planet since it was still stuck inside the Death Egg Mark II at the end. And I'd love to see the events of said games revisited someday, even if it is in comic form. I'm not certain it's game canon anymore, to be honest. So Mm. before I say, yeah, sure, I'd I'd rather get a definitive yay or nay from Sega and then go from there. Yeah, they've. Hmm. That's one of those they seem to want to. uh, not acknowledge, <laughs> but uh, who knows? Whoops. Next question is from Happy Times. Ian, while you've stated you don't think Sonic would willingly take on negative energy of the emeralds, what do you think the result would be if the negative energy was forced into him? Would we have gotten something like Dark Sonic from Sonic X or Fleetway's version of Super Sonic where it becomes sadistic and out of control? Or since Sonic can still keep control even after absorbing other negative forces of energy, like some of Dark Gaia's energy and the world rings that represent rage, sadness, and hatred, would Sonic just go super without any notable differences besides maybe a different design? I I mean, you make a good case for both. Um, given where Hog and Darkspine, it would stand to reason that he would maintain some level of control and identity. Uh, but that's so boring. It is. <laughs> I mean, at least with Dark Spine, it sounded like he had kind of an aggressive streak to him. He sounded kind of on the edge of losing control. And the animations for the Werehog do belie some more bestial mannerisms. So it's not like 100% his normal self. So maybe you can fudge it there a little. Maybe he's like, maybe Dark Supersonic would be actually like mean with his whips like kind of like oh you you'd you'd normally pull your punches there but that's that's a that's something you can't take back come on that's not nice to say don't come on (laughs) don't oh so he he would be just supersonic from fleetway (laughs) fleetway supersonic from what little i remember was like just straight up crazy Uh, sadistic uh, that's true, that's true. Now, Sonic in Fleetway was just kind of mean. Just yeah, regular okay, Sonic, yeah. Yeah, I get you, I get you, I get you. Um, visually, it needs to be something different. Yeah. Like, Dark Super Sonic in Sonic X was so brief, there's barely anything to really pull from there. So, but you don't want, like, a full retread of Dark Spine, because that's, that's a World Ring transformation. You don't want to do that again, exactly. Right. Um, and the only like straight up negative energy transformation we've seen is perfect chaos. And he was already getting weird tentacly things. I don't think that's a good standard to go by unless you get like Cthulhu Sonic. And then, mm. <laughs> uh oh, yeah, da- 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 Davy Jones style Sonic. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Do you fear speed? <laughs> <laughs> you fear of the ability to go fast. <laughs> it sounds like Antoine. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> Giant Cthulhu, Dark Sonic. <laughs> what did he say? I think so I got a speed keyed. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Amazing. <laughs> Here's one from your arch rival, Ian. It's another Ian. <laughs> Ian Waffles. When reading old Archie Sonic, I only saw Scourge the Hedgehog as the measuring stick to compare Sonic's worst behaviors to, such as his ego and violence. Around the middle of the Mecha Sally arc, Sonic has dragged Silver by the quills, attempted to guilt Knuckles into giving him his warp ring, and even threatened the Babylon rogues by saying, if I wasn't the good guy, I would make stuffing out of you turkeys and make sure you couldn't leave this pile of junk before it comes crashing down. If my friends aren't okay, then you'd better hope you can run faster than me. All this is to ask when Sonic is in Freedom HQ and recalls Scourge telling him, all it would take is one bad day and you'd be just like me. Was this to imply that Sonic was convinced he was going to become just like Scourge? Or was this Sonic contemplating whether all these horrible things that had been happening to him, as well as his more recent spiteful behavior, could be leading to his one bad day? Also, this question is from October 2019 and we never... I never asked it. It just got like lost in the shuffle and I managed to dig it up. So sorry about that, Ian. Anyway, Ian, go ahead. <laughs> I was like, don't apologize to me. Oh, you mean Ian, not Ian. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. The waffle um, man. I mean, I think people feel bad for silver in that moment, but let's have some context here. Sonic had just been through some really, 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 really rough times. And here's Silver popping out of the blue to accuse his dear friends of treasonous and accuses it's, Antoine. Uh, go back. Go back. Accuses. Yeah. Start his, accuses his dear lifelong friends of being treasonous again with <laughs> no proof. And then says it was Antoine. Antoine, who just, you know, was lost on the line of duty being super heroic. Nah. Like, yeah, Sonic could have handled it better, but I completely understand him just being done mm-hmm. with Silver at that point. And a lot with, and along with a lot of the other instances there. But uh, yeah, it is meant that particular scene is meant to him is meant to be him reflecting on recent events and realizing that he's going a little too far. He's getting away from who he is at his core. And needs to course correct. And that's what kind of leads to the formation of the two teams. Yeah. Here's one from Tick Tick. In the reboot, Antoine said that he didn't know why his courtship with Sally didn't work. But he discovered years later why. Is that a reference to her sexual orientation? You know, I can't remember now if that was a seed. Or if that was meant more to be uh, Antoine gaining some (laughs) self-reflection Antoine realizing that he was being really weird and overbearing yeah that was not (laughs) I mean it it works it it works either way but I honestly can't remember the context when we were writing that it's been so long Hmm. well I don't know what I do know is we have this question here from Jib do we know how long Shadow has been around before Gun attacked the Ark or has that information never been stated before I am not aware if it has been stated, and if it has, it's probably something that's Japanese exclusive minutia, Uh, but I don't think it's ever been specified. And if it has, was it only in the context of SA2? Does it take Shadow the Hedgehog into account, you know? Right. Here's one from Mike B. It seems likely that the Freedom Fighters will be a no-show in anything related to the Sonic anniversary. With the fandom fractured over whether or not they come back or will be redesigned, etc. What are some ideas to celebrate them for the anniversary despite the lack of support from Sega slash IDW? I, you don't need them to enjoy stuff. Nope. And you haven't needed them to enjoy them since sadam has been dead for, what, 20 years? You know, just <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, and it's been you know? 30. <laughs> Almost 30 years. Oh my god. Really? <laughs> yes, it's been like 20 okay, uh would have been like what 94 95 was the last season. So yeah, it's been like 28 27 years. Good lord. <sighs> yeah, yeah. And yet, the love and devotion. Yep. 
continues. So yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Celebrate them for what they are. Do fan art, do fanfic, talk to your friends about them, post it online and say, you know, it's Sonic's 30th anniversary. And we remember those who, you know, aren't necessarily invited to the birthday table. Here's the freedom fighters. Huzzah. Yeah. As long as you keep them alive within your hearts and within your community, they're not going anywhere. Yeah. And heck, you know, go watch the episodes. That's always a good time. That's always fun to go back to Saturday a.m. Um, they're apparently on YouTube officially now posted by wild brain. So really check out their channel. Yeah. They've got not just set AM, but all underground and adventures of up there as Neat. well. So yeah, check them out, check them out. Hey, you know, they're up there and the Christmas specials up there apparently, which I guess falls under adventures of, but still, <laughs> yeah, here's one from Sam Cybercat. Just a little for fun question. If you had free reign to write a day in the life of story about any of Eggman's sidekicks from any version version of Sonic, Scratch and Grounder, Robot and Cubot, Agent Stone, Grimer, Snively, etc., who would be your first pick and why? I almost want to say Agent Stone because <laughs> he's he's the freshest of the bunch and the you know barista setting that he's in as of the trailer is entertaining like i'm kind of curious I, what he's been up to since since the yeah like i, I want to know i want to know his story how did he come under eggman's influence how did he deal with the loss of his mentor you know i i dig it and the actor's really into it too which is a lot of fun yeah yeah uh i'm I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he has embraced sort of that that character and that the fandom has embraced him because mm-hmm. yeah, i mean it could have really gone either way where like people would be like yeah he's just kind of there and just kind of boring but uh the fact that he has seven the actors having so much fun with it is is great so i hope he uh i hope he sticks around yeah me too and uh snively like any era snively any incarnation of snively yeah that that's a bottomless wolf from mm-hmm. and you could do stuff with like the others sure but those i feel like are some of the more fertile ground yeah and you've already explored starline pretty heavily so yeah it, he's more or less been like the sub star of the series for he's been a in, year at this point yeah he's been the driving force behind a lot of stuff recently so uh, and i'm not i don't know grimer well enough to really say so that's not a snub to grimer versus snively it's just I don't know Grimer as well. Yeah. Or Sleet and Dingo. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 They existed. Yep. They sure did. Speaking of things that exist, here's a question from Speedweed. So as we know we're now, as one of the most recent games compared to the most recent Sonic game, out of all the cast we can choose from between IDW and post-reboot Archie movies, games, and the like, which Sonic character would give Samus Aran, legendary bounty hunter herself, the most trouble? Samus Aran. Jeez. I don't know. It, I, I believe it is Aran, but I always in my head it's always been Aran. So anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Cheese. Cheese? Yeah. An absolute powerhouse that can wreck the armor, but there's no way she can pull the trigger on the baby. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> and now the chat is going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheese. Yeah. Good. Good. I love it. Yeah. The baby. And our last question before we take a quick break comes from Unlikely Veronica. Favorite shade of blue for Sonic? Uh, the brighter, richer blue. Not so much the powder blue of classic or some of the darker blue that modern sad. It's maybe like maybe adventure area, maybe a shade lighter. Uh, I'm going to be a cop out and say the official color of the Sega logo, which is the color he should be mm. <laughs> that blue right there. But that blue has also been through a few different permutations to be fair. So sometimes it's lighter. Sometimes it's not. It goes through different versions. Cause let's see, there was one, they had an older logo, um, the older version of their logo when they first adopted it was a kind of a lighter blue than it was later on. So I changed it and like, I guess they changed it in 97. Hmm. Something weird like that. 
So, yeah, but whatever color that is, because that's what he's supposed to be, dang it. <laughs> that's the whole point. He's Sega's mascot, so he is Sega Blue. Oh, that's it. That's all. That's all we got. Before things get too blue around here, we're going to take a break, and then we'll be back with more Bumblecast. No, I don't know what that meant either. <laughs> We're back, and we got a question from J. Sliderman 3. In terms of the games, Sonic Colors, slash Generation, slash Lost World, slash other games written by Pontek and Graf, which script is the more canonical one, English or Japanese? Uh, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. And I feel like if I were to speculate, my reasoning might get me in trouble. So I'm just going to say, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. I'm kind of curious about this one too. Just, just out of, just out of curiosity, but obviously you can't really go there. So, oh, well, the answer is yes. (laughs) Here's a question from spider Sonic 2021. Hey, I got a question. Would the surge and kit be a match for metal Sonic? Oh my goodness, it's almost like that would show up in a comic in the near future. <clears throat> no, no, spoiler alert. I'm not going to say when, not going to say where, just going to say, uh, be patient. <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready. Here's one from Almiron R. Have you or any member of the IDW crew used quote unquote writing around the trademarks for a character you wanted in the comics. People used to do it with Sherlock Holmes in some cases. I can't think of any time I've done that myself. Um the old Archie books were rife with it, I remember that. Yeah. But after the big switch up, I can't really think of anything. You kinda went Yeah, you you kind of went away from that going forward once you took over. So less pop culture references, more Sonic references. <laughs> yeah. Like if we're going to do a multiverse thing, let's do, you know, something thematic and interesting, not just it's Batman, but Sonic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we're not going to or... name, we're not going to name a character sleuth, the doggy dog, just because Snoop <laughs> dog is popular. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, or I like I know some artists will put in you know extras as like a visual nod here and there. Like I think me, uh, what was it? Chow races and Badnik bases. Like Flick from Animal Crossing is a chameleon within the crowd at one point. Mm-hmm. It's not like exactly one to one Flick, but it's you know, it's Flick if you know what to look for and other stuff like that. Yeah, but. uh Personally, no, I, I don't. I, maybe I have. If like, if you remember and you want to just say liar, liar, call me out in the comments below. <laughs> Prove that I have no memory. Yeah, yeah. Here's one from Gab Sam. How does Belle look like 200 years in the future? She's got no joints to hold her up or a face to make her smile she has biodegraded because it's been 200 years <laughs> i thought she would be petrified yeah uh, maybe <laughs> here's a question from akia snb as the guy who's got plenty of great ideas for the different characters in the franchise which underutilized characters from spin-offs do you think would be best fit for a mainline game personally i'd love to see the babylon rogues more i miss those dorks Ah, so you mean what spinoff material to be more incorporated into the main game? Like one characters, I think, is what specifically they're referring to. But uh, yeah, because I'm because I'm thinking like, oh, sure, Knuckles game, Tails game, but they're they're talking more like fringe. Yeah, yeah, more. like you know, oh, okay, okay, Babylon okay. Rogues are pretty much exclusive to writers. For the example. writer series, right? Yeah, right, right, yeah, right, 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 yeah. Right. characters like that, or characters from yeah. like Tales Adventure, like Witch Card and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I feel like we've already covered. You've kind those. of, you kind of main, you kind of mind most of them throughout your, throughout history. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing a return to imaginary world within the context of a main story. I would see Lumina and Void again. 
I think you get a little bit of mileage out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but Sonic doesn't have a ton of spinoff material or rather spinoff material with exclusive elements, you know, like even with the big party games like the Olympics, you have most of the main cast in there and then some. Yeah, uh, if you want to count like the rush games and the rival games as spin-offs rather than you know mainline titles on different consoles, you were missing out on Blaze and Marine, but these did show up in the mainline game. Yeah, they so I guess okay, so so Marine, maybe the Mecha Pirates give them a bit more love. Sure. Okay, okay, okay. There's that, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of like spin-off spin-off material. Like the storybook games I feel like are better as they are. Like they are storybook. Yeah. They are their own contained thing. Cause Shahada and Marlena don't really work outside of the context of their stories. You remove them from their own narrative and they have no purpose. So right. why would you do that? There's also I mean, you made Bean and Bark your own thing, really. They're like your, they're your trademarks, pretty much. They're nah, nah, nah. I mean, as far as like what they are, you've kind of essentially made them that way. <laughs> yes, but so that's that's cultivating the land for someone else. They are not mine. Right, right. As much as I can say that you know, I I poured my love into them. They aren't mine. That's not how licensed material works. Well, I I know, I know, but you know. You essentially established them as what they are today. So, but I mean, like sticks, bring sticks it, bring sticks in. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. I mean, Cosmo. That's another one. Shade. Bring shade back. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be fun. Um, Look at you. You're 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 digging this up better than I did. Yeah. You brought in honey already, so I can't. <laughs> I can't even bring that one up. Or or breezy. Uh. The doctor from oh, Adventures shoot. of Freedom you Fighters. Brought him we're, in we're talking about well, I mean, we're yeah, talking about spinoff material. I figured they were obvious though, but yeah, you know, bring them back from Sonic Spinball. It's kind of a weird thing that they were in Sonic Spinball only, and they were stuck in containers the whole time. Very weird. But those are some. Those they're super obscure characters. Like they just. I mean, that was like their only time they ever appeared in anything. It's weird. And you know, what? I feel like if you were just to look at Spinball, that works as an intro story they were <laughs> i mean it kind of does trying, they were trying to stop the vegetal fortress which itself is a giant roboticizer yeah bunny is half turned because sonic didn't pinball his way up and bust her out fast enough and the next time they show up it's to stop another eggman base you know remember that time we all met on mount mobius no i was in a pinball machine well we were there too oh yeah i freed you bada bang perfect or rather <laughs> bing 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 whoop whoop other pinball noises. <laughs> yes. That terrifying shrill noise as the Brexon jumps up and tries to eat you. <laughs> and then you get an emerald. Da, 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 da. Uh, They're all I, blue. I, 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 I kind of love the music from Spoonball. It's a little farty, but you know, it's Genesis. <laughs> you kind of expect that. There's <laughs> uh, <laughs> one from Pite. Hey, person I don't know. Some guy in my Discord chat wants you to make a character that is a reference to Sonic.exe, the video game. Thought you should know. I will take it under consideration. <laughs> yes, that's fan material, buddy. You can't touch that. Here's one from Mark A. Why is Sonic's power so hard to track down? Some believe he is a multiversal god. Some believe he's barely city level. For once, I just want to know the truth. Could you please tell us? Which Sonic, which form of media, what time period? <laughs> what is Sonic's power level? Well, it could like, be under 9,000 or over. Uh, just defining know. it within the Archie books is like pre or post reboot. My era or earlier. Yeah, it's he's been written kind of all over the place. And that's why he doesn't have a solid definable power set. Right. I, I can't tell you a definitive thing because you can refute me seven different ways to Sunday. Yeah. I don't know. The real the real power of Sonic is the friends that we made along the way. <laughs> That's right. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Here's one from Fiblin. The Sonic and Cyclopedia has finally released, and it notes that classic Sonic goes into an alternate future after Mania. 
Does this mean the Generations timeline split is now canon? As far as I know, that's the direction I've been given. Weird. I'm not sure I like that. But I'm not Sega, so what do I know? Here's one from the Mason Gamer. Have you ever gotten a chance to talk with John Gray about the slap scene? Oh, no. <laughs> He's a very talented artist, but manipulating his work as a way to change people's perspective doesn't seem right. We've talked about it and lamented over it a lot. Uh, we're both very, very tired of it. Mm -hmm. um, it is very exhausting. Like, I, I understand what he was trying to do at the time was to make this big pivotal moment a big impactful moment and he has said that he looks back on us like it was too much you know yeah it was his first professional gig right working on his dream job he got a little carried away and you know nobody with any kind of authority or experience decided to do their job and rein him in so there it is and years later after constant obnoxious harassment he gets thrown under the bus and is labeled the evil mastermind behind it. I still don't understand how people fall for that malarkey. <laughs> Brand new artist manages to overrule the lead writer, the editor, and the licensor. <laughs> I think people just don't understand how uh, the comic actually works and how it's how it's made. You know, they just, they just still, don't get it's, it. That doesn't make any. It doesn't even matter if you don't understand the process. That doesn't make any logical sense whatsoever. No, it doesn't. But if you fell for that, you go outside, touch grass. Good Lord. <laughs> and for the love of God, get over it. It's what? Is that 20 years old? Kyle, help me out. Here. <laughs> it might be. You pretty, have the better grasp on time. It might be pretty close. <laughs> it might be pretty close. I'm trying to remember. Never mind that it was written out. It was done. They moved past it. And it was, it was moot. Yeah. And they rebooted. They the series rebooted and then got canceled anyway oh yeah get reboot so it doesn't even count it didn't actually happen retroactively erased from time so technically yeah uh, okay let's see this slap slap issue came out in march 2004 so yeah it's very nearly 20 years old good night and when people still talking about it, just yeah move on yeah pretty much but yeah i know he's tired of people being mad over a non-issue and no, it's issue yeah. number 134. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't and, yeah, it's a rookie mistake. And it's not even that big of a mistake. I mean, it was not really. a flawed. I mean, I understand what Mr. Bowlers was doing or was attempting to do, but I don't know if that's the best ex execution of that idea, let alone the best idea. But that's a whole other topic. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it happened. And now we're older and wiser so it it, it happened yeah it's done now yeah Move along. that's kind of what i've kind of thought about it too was it's like not the the episode or the issue is uh maybe wasn't necessarily the best as first assignment for john um just as a new artist and having that kind of pivotal moment in there, you know, it, it's like he went, he, he has a very cartoony, like very, very much, uh, yeah, an a expression driven style. So he gets, and that was his first professional gig. So, you know, he gets super duper into it, super excited and decided to go big with it. So I think nowadays he would be a bit more restrained and understand that uh, what the moment requires a bit more, but you know, at the time it made more sense why uh, it turned out the way it did. So I uh. think what it, one of the things that just, I find so tiresome about it is people kind of treat it like the Gwen Stacy neck snap. Yeah. When it is not remotely as important or as sea changing an event. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> this has been built. This has been building up over like, several several issues probably several years so yeah it's it, it, sonic kind of deserved it but uh, whatever it's not any it's not that bad it's not a big deal it no longer matters talking about it they still. moved over yeah it's yeah 
<sighs> well, we have one more question, though. This one comes to us from Stumble Real. Okay, just give it to me straight, Flynn. Are you dying? I hope not. I got things to do. <laughs> I think this might have been from when you were having uh, voice and breathing issues. <laughs> so this is oh, an old, oh, so this oh, is an old oh, one. Oh, 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 but, oh. you know, I just thought it was funny out of context, too. <laughs> Are I, you dying? I, I... <laughs> well, not, I mean, we're all kind of dying if you think about it too hard. But maybe Wait. don't think about it hard. And <laughs> maybe don't think about it that hard. <laughs> no, no, I was having... Yeah, the, we finally figured out that the breathing issues were um, a combination of the cat litter that we were using. Yeah. It was creating too fine a dust, and apparently my uh, delicate lungs couldn't handle it. And I keep bringing home flowers for Leah to you know brighten up the room, and she enjoys flowers. So it's a nice thing, and I don't know what's in these bouquets, but it does not agree with me. So, yeah, we'll have them nice and pretty for about three days. And then I start sounding like this. And it's like, okay, it's time to. <clears throat> oh. We, we, we got to figure out which one, what, what pollen is yeah, it? Yeah, what specific flower? Yeah. Like, what is it that sets me off? But. Yep. Uh, bad lungs in general. And just finding new and fun ways to trigger those attacks. Yay. <laughs> Went to one specialist and one doctor and did all sorts of breathing tests and nobody thought to ask oh is it an allergen maybe should we test that no <laughs> of course not <laughs> uh oh well allergies are, allergies are kind of hard to track down too so it can be difficult but yeah fake flowers for lee from now on <laughs> <laughs> no those gather dust and guess what the dust does to you uh well, so does everything else, especially where I live. Like, this is a freaking dust. I live in the freaking Dust Bowl, dude. I, mm -hmm. I, I cannot. Like, there's dust everywhere, and I have uh, allergy issues. So, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> I know what's, so I know what, I know I'm, what's up. I'm kind of glad we, we still have the mask thing going on. It, it <laughs> works for me just fine. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Doesn't bother me. Bothers everyone around me, but you know what? I don't care about them, so... Yeah, well, they can ignore it, and they'll eventually not have to worry about it. Yep. Oh, man. I, uh, but I, I do care about what the people who uh, support this show think and how they feel. Oh, absolutely. Yes. We have over 100 of them coming from patreon.com backslash bumblecast and ko-fi.com backslash bumblecast. Big thank you to Daniel H, Alex P, James K, John B, Jennifer R, Robotnik Holmes, Samuel P, Sam Cybercat, Torchbound, Mike B, Couplin Crew 128, Do Is Diz Din, DK, Andrew D, Dave M, Off, Salute Your Cat, Scruffy Matt, Chris A, J Frost, Sony, John M, Noni, Hero of Light 13, Jib, Don B, Yami M, Lee H, K, Lisa M, Ryan D, Chavel, Blue Title Gamer, Tick Tick, Invade Turbo Tunis, Ben W, Fiona M, Final Neil, Sonic, 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 Jonathan D, Dabbler, the Dalek, Chaos Universe, Sonic Legacy, Daniel B, Godzilla, Nimric, Pedanticat, Red the Supernamic, Dove, Pan Dolce, Joe S, Chad, Soler, Stain, the name is X, Jennifer H, Preston M, Nathan J, Ava, Arctic, Les, Alphamon, or Yukin, Sapphire, Scarletta, Chase, L, Noah S, Axis, Patron, Saint of Chicken Nuggies, Saint Jerry, Kojiro, Highwind, Professor Rye, Cameron H, Red W, Beers, Callum Q, Owen B, BD, Kimiko, Radri, Sandroni, the Painter, Scurvy Pirate Hog, Joey the Sonic Fan, Just a Mountain Soul, Turbo Crooker, Maddie H, Lewis J, Ty H, N Zephyr, Audrey Shrugged, KJB, Mox, Rusty Cook, Four Sonic Fan, Techno Cinema, Netra 14, and Tails, Dream Boaten, Chaos Voltage, Darusavol, Lacey M, Unlikely Veronica, Jolene B, Expired Bread 12, The Marble Gardener, and Lewis C. Alrighty, man. Jeez. That's a that list has grown and grown and grown, and I hope it grows some more. It grows. Every one of you are seen and appreciated, so thank you so much for supporting the show. Yes, thank you, thank you. And that's, that's gonna wrap it. us up for this episode of the Bumblecast. Come back Friday for a special patron sponsored guest episode. It is the Doctor Starline Q and A. That's gonna be interesting. I'm scared. You're either going to find it hilarious or cringeworthy, but by God, we're putting it out there. Well, I mean, it's this show, so cringe comes with the territory. I suppose, I suppose. Yes, yeah. Until then, we embrace yourselves. It. 
<laughs> be good to each other. <laughs> Embrace the cringe. And we will see you Friday <laughs> for a special Bumble cast. Yeah. See you then. Okay. Let's knock her out. Are we recording? I don't know who she is, and I don't know why we should knock her out, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, we're recording. All right. You've been listening to The Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T. Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. My wife, um, she is, she's a teacher. Her class is the cringe queendom, and she is the cringe queen. <laughs> so I am surrounded by cringe. I've been forged in the cringe, molded by it. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't marry into cringe. This was a cringe meets cringe union. <laughs>